Hey guys, welcome to the channel. This is episode 3 of the virtual PPL series and today we're going to take a look at straight and level flight. So an introduction into straight and level flight. It is flight in which a constant heading and altitude is maintained. It's used during cross countries from, for flying uh, from point A to point B and it's a fundamental flight maneuver and uh, it's used in all aspects of flying really. Uh, when it's done correctly, the airspeed will remain constant and the attitude indicator will be level, the altimeter will not move and the turn coordinator will read wings level. Additionally, the slip indicator will indicate with the ball in the middle that we're flying through. So the instruments that we're going to use for pitch control are the attitude indicator, that's a direct indication of pitch, the altimeter, which is also a primary pitch instrument, and the vertical speed indicator, which is the indirect indicator of trend and rate, and the airspeed indicator, which is also an in indirect indica indication of pitch. For bank control, we'll be using the attitude indicator. It directly and instantly shows changes in bank. The heading indicator is also a primary bank indication in uh, instrument and then the turn coordinator, which is indirect indication of bank. With regards to the slip indicator, so the ball at the bottom of the turn coordinator, um, ball, if the ball is centered, straight and level flight. If the ball is right, we're in a right turn, right wing is low. And if the ball is left, left wing low in a left turn. So to perform the straight and level flight procedure, the first thing we need to do is pick a reference point. There isn't really much round here where I'm currently, however, if we look straight ahead, there is a mountain over there, and we will use that as our rough reference point. So what we need to do, we need to maintain our current pitch attitude, and the way to do that is to make sure that that reference point is motionless in comparison to the rest of the aircraft. You need to note the picture that you can see, And uh, a good trick is uh, using, I mean, this is what we do in real life. It's quite difficult in the sim, um, but it's definitely still possible, is uh, the finger method, which is how many fingers between the horizon and the top of your glare shield or your cowling. Um, that's what they tr teach in the actual BBL, and it's uh, an invaluable tool for straight and level VFR flight. So currently what we're doing is we're just maintaining this mountain range here roughly the same distance to the glare shield and the edge of the cowling at all times and just keeping our head in going that way. This way we don't need to look really at our instruments too much which is really important with VFR flight. The main purpose of VFR is visual uh, so you're supposed to be looking out at all times uh, especially for other aircraft. So it's really fundamental to learn to monitor the picture in front of you and maintain that picture. All your instruments are supplement to this. So you can look at your picture, look down at your airspeed, see that it's constant at 90 knots, look back at your picture, look at your uh, artificial horizon and see that we are level and again look back up and then again look down at the altimeter and see that it's not moving. And you just keep repeating that. Same for the VSI. There is lag on the VSI, it's really important to remember. So if I pitch up, and then pitch down, you'll see there's a good half a second to a second lag there. It's quite useful in flight. Um, a lot of the digital screens these days are very instant and it can make you over control the aircraft where you, you start doing this to try and keep it level basically and keep that reading where you want it um, but you, you're just never going to do that with the BSI um, it's only a supplemental instrument anyway the two common errors that occur when trying to fly straight and level especially for beginners is fixation where you either fixate on the picture 
or you fixate on an instrument. Doing either will result in some sort of deviation somewhere. So if we just fixate on this mountain range, for example, just we just get it back on the nose a little bit. We just fixate on that. Soon enough, we could start slowly descending. Even though we've noticed the, the movement here, we may not pick up on it. And then the other issue is fixation on an instrument. If we fixate on the altimeter, for example, very quickly we'll start veering off to the left or to the right or something. The other common uh, mistake that people make is uh, over controlling. So you get a little bit of turbulence and you start over controlling like so and very quickly you either start losing your altitude or gaining altitude. But you basically just have to have a, a really good uh, look out and scan with your instruments. So looking out at the picture, looking at the back of your instruments, looking out at your picture, looking back at your instruments and uh, also looking out for other aircraft. So although that we maintain our picture here, it's con it's uh, really important that we do, as part of our scan, keep an eye on our head and indicator. So if I just get this on 270, just for simplicity, we want to maintain this 270, and it's now going to be this is going to be our reference point here. There's a little dip in the mountains, but we have to keep glancing back at our instruments, keep a good scan, and make sure that we're still on west, basically. In terms of correcting uh, deviations in our heading, it's much easier to, to correct a 1 degree up to 5 degree heading sort of thing uh, deviation because it's very simple to get that back. Whereas if we have a 30 degree uh, deviation, we've got a lot more work to do. We now have to get back onto heading of 270. And we also have to make sure that we're tracking as, as we planned. Um, there is the, a rule called a 1 in 60 rule. Um, it's best to just Google that and have a look and that'll explain um, basically how far you can be off track. So for every 60 knots um, in, you can deviate by one degree. Um, you could be one nautical mile off track. So that's it today, guys, for the episode 3 straight and level. Very quick one, simple, but very important that we get it right. If you did enjoy the video, please do give it a like. And if you want to see more of the series and uh, future updates from Microsoft Flight Simulator, please do consider hitting the subscribe button. Thank you very much for your time. And all yeah, the best for the new year. Away, Cause every time I wake up, I feel like it's Monday. Something's going wrong with all the chemicals up in my brain. All of a sudden, I don't look at anything the same way. Gotta build up of my thoughts sitting in an ashtray. I'm sorry that I'm so inconvenient, okay? Just let me be me and I'll stay out of your way. I